Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. For the second straight night, under the lights here at Rip Griffin Park, it will be Texas Tech against Louisville. Although tonight, major ramifications as the Super Regionals are on the line. We started with four teams. New Mexico State, the first eliminated. Kent State followed at the hands of Louisville earlier today. Now Texas Tech needs one win to advance to the Supers. Louisville will have to beat the Red Raiders tonight and come back tomorrow if they can make it six straight trips to the Super Regionals. With that, hello and welcome to Lubbock. I'm Lowell Glendo here with the former All-American Keith Moreland. And you go back to what happened a night ago. Texas Tech got the win 10-4. to It's a different game if Louisville can clean up some things and if they can slow down Josh Young, and that's been a difficult task. Well, it's been hard for anybody in the country to slow down Josh Young all season long. Very easily could have been the Big 12 Player of the Year. He does so many different things. He can hit the ball in the ballpark. He plays an outstanding third base. He takes pitches. He's a guy that leads by example, and he's done that in this regional so far where he's, he's stayed, let the ball come to him. He stays back. He'll go the other direction. That's what's so impressive to me, and you can see the numbers right there. He scored four times already. He's driven in two, and he's four for six in the regional. On the other side of that, Devin Mann's been really good for Louisville. Yeah, they eliminated Kent State in an elimination game. He was able to reach six times every time he got up. Well, he's got good extension. He hits the ball in the ballpark here. He's that three, four, five, the three of that three, four, five. And he's done an outstanding job setting the table. The pitching matchup, Reed Detmers for Louisville, going up against Davis Martin of Texas Tech. Super Regionals on the line here in Lubbock. We had an excellent crowd last night here at Rick Griffin Park on the campus of Texas Tech University. It will be the same with another frenetic environment here in Lubbock because the Red Raiders of Texas Tech have an opportunity to advance to the Super Regionals with a win here tonight for Louisville for the second straight game facing elimination they will turn to a freshman Bobby Miller got them past Kent State now can Reed Detmers do the job against Texas Tech? Well you look at Reed Detmers he's got an outstanding arm stay composed it was much like we thought with Bobby, Bobby Miller season on the line right here elimination time command his fastball he has 33 walks low in 53 innings so he's got to pitch ahead command that fastball and it's a good one by the way and then the last one he has allowed six home runs and 53 innings of work and you're playing the Red Raiders in this ballpark keep it in the park and that is always a factor when you play here in Lubbock with the confines and the way the wind whips around here in this home of the Texas Tech Red Raiders Denver is the midweek starter for most of the year for the Cardinals they will have to win twice against the Red Raiders to advance First pitch to Gabe Holt. Ball one. Holt is a speedster, one of the most electric players in the Big 12. One through four did all the damage in the first matchup of this regional between these two teams with Holt, Klein, Young, and Little all driving in two apiece. This is one of the best offenses in college baseball. No doubt about it. The average is 8.3, 8.4 runs per game. And that hits Gabe Holt, free pass. And this is trouble on the bases here. Well, he does a great job of setting the table right here. You see this fastball move back to the inside. And he's got that elbow pad on it. Just allows it to hit that pad. Takes first base. And setting the table. Shadow, a factor in these games around 6 o'clock this time of the year here at Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. He, he, right now, tough to see spin. Hitters in the shade, pitchers in the sun. And it's not a ho-hum situation with Holt on first base. 27 for 27 in stolen bases this year. He's not off until it slips away from Zeke Pinkham, who gets the start in this second game of the day. Also got the start last night with Zach Britton getting the start at catcher earlier today against Kent State. Stay composed. That's what we talked about. We saw Miller struggle a little bit in the first inning, able to pitch out of it earlier today. A true freshman that pitching, they've never had this environment that they've had to pitch in when they, their season is on the line. A lot on this young man's shoulders. Louisville so used to playing at home in this regional stage. 1-0, and that also misses. 
Well, the Cardinals, they have the longest active streak of reaching the Supers. Doing such in five straight years for Texas Tech, one of four teams to host a regional in three straight years. And another one gets by Beacon. And Holt gets on with the walk, advances to second, and now third. Well, this is a pass ball. It, 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 we talk about the shadow, but you're in the back there, you're the same way. You can say he just tried to reach down and tried to frame it, catches right off the tip of his glove and gets away. Second pass ball, in my opinion, two pass balls in the inning. And that's the official tally for both of those. And this is not a good start for Louisville. Back-to-back -back walks, and you have two on for one of the top bats in college baseball, Josh Young, who has been hot as a pistol here in Lubbock. Four for six in the regional, four walks, no strikeouts. Sophomore standout from MacArthur High School in San Antonio. Those numbers, many of them the best in the Big 12, specifically batting average and RBI. First pitch strike now from Debers. And Texas Tech was ready for this. As soon as that earlier game ended, they were on the field, heading down to the first base dugout. Well, they're, they're ready to play. They're anxious to get, to get going. And the other thing is they're showing patience, so the hit batter and the walk show me that they're not over amped. Low and inside to make it 1 1 to Young. Fastball, then a changeup. That's been the MO. It will spin a, a more of a slurve than the other two, but right now, composure needs to find a way to make a great pitch right now. To right field on the line. Will it stay fair? And it hooks. Just foul. Way out of here, foul. I mean, onto the track. <laughs> foul. Is ready for the triple jump foul. I mean, folks, this ball was hit nearly 400 feet that direction. And that's the direction that the wind is whipping. Wow. Young had a home run in that direction last night. It's 1 2. Oh, nice bender, but it misses the spot to even us up at 2-2. Two, two. What is the theme, though? Everything is up. Got to keep it down in this park. You do. Absolutely. If you're going to miss, you got to miss downstairs. <laughs> to right field. It drops. Red Raiders on the board. It's a really professional, don't want to say he's not, he's a college player, but a very professional approach to hitting. Stay inside the ball, look for the ball out over the plate, and he puts a really nice swing on this. Five for seven now in this regional is Josh Young. Well, maybe not a professional right now, but it's not going to be all too long before Josh Young is making some money for putting together at bats like that. And you're not out of the woods yet. Young with the RBI single. And it brings up Grant Little, who joined Josh Young on the Baseball America second team All-American team. Little two for four in the first game against Louisville. Also drove in two runs, like Young. His numbers, second in the Big 12 in terms of batting average and RBI. Right behind his teammate, Young. Swinging through that. Chasing it downstairs. That's a little tail to the fastball.
and it's 2-1. Just inconsistent with his command. And you get in hitters counts against this Red Raider ball club, you're going to be in trouble. 2-0, 2-1, 3-1. Excellent pitch there. Pull the string. Best changeup of the day. You see him come out. Great arm speed with it. And you can see little out in front of it right there. Once again, though, a start for Louisville where they have helped the cause for Texas Tech. That's the way the game started last night with Louisville. Some sloppy play early on that allowed the Red Raiders to take the early lead before the bats truly got going. A mile high to right field. Drew Campbell's going to give it a look, and it's out of play. Win pushing that direction. As light a breeze as we've seen, probably 15, 18 miles an hour, going basically in from left center. It's not as much across, so it's pushing everything down the right field line out of play. And this time of year here in Lubbock, this is an is unusual as, win. And as nice of an evening as yes. you can expect and imagine. Down on strikes, Detmers with the comeback K. Well, just really nice job of, of mixing right here. Comes out, drops it on his back foot. Little had already committed, and you can see him right over the top of it in his back foot. Hickman has to go over to get to it. That was a big-time pitch right there and a necessity to get the first out of the inning. Zach Reams, team leader in home runs. Went hitless last night against the Cardinals. Did have a home run in the opener against New Mexico State. This is the fourth matchup between the Cardinals and the Red Raiders this season. They met for two games, midweek and mid-March. Red Raiders won the first. Cardinals won the second up at Patterson Stadium in Kentucky. Matchup number three was last night. Too high to Reams. Command. He is fighting it right now. High elevated pitch count. 20. And only one out to show for it for Detmers. To right field! Kiss it goodbye! Where did that one land, Keith? La Mesa. <laughs> it's a town about, about 20 miles south of here. And this ball is absolutely crushed. Help from the wind. Onto the middle of the track. It's a false start. We, we talked about being able to command, and that's what you have to do. The inability to throw enough strikes. The hit batter, the walk, both score. Then the base hit and the homer, and it's 4 0. It's a three run home run, and I believe a school record in the javelin as well. <laughs> it's going to be a real test. For Louisville to see if they can gather themselves here. It's almost like you just, you just basically got to say, all right, 
we spotted you four and we got to start all over so you need to get some outs and then get going and we talk so much about young and little however the man that delivered that now has 15 home runs and this man Cameron Warren has that same type of power he can go oppo and send it up into that breeze been playing his best baseball as of late Logan Wyatt it's about five rows deep and a nice catch in the stands Barehanded, or did he bring a glove? I think he has a glove. I cannot confirm, but I thought I saw some leather flashing from up here. One, two to Cameron Warren. 10 home runs, 52 driven in. Not too bad for your number six hitter. Oh, this is an offensive club. I mean, you, you go down the line. You have to, you have to go, really, their shortstop, Michael Davis, is hitting 297, so he's only three points under 300. And he's got 50 driven in. One, two. Hey, come on, Reed, come on, Reed. There is the starting shortstop for the Red Raiders, Michael Davis. Patiently waiting his turn. And it's full. Command. And there's now two down. Oh. Two strikeouts have been two off-speed pitches. A really good break of ball, and that a 3-2 changeup. And he had Warren out in front. But get the out here. Get into the dugout. See if your offense can't get right back in the game. Tech came in to the Lubbock Regional, averaging about eight and a half runs per game. Third most in college baseball. And they're at four here in the top of the first inning. So Tech on the scoreboard. The away team, after they had the rights, claim the home territory. The first matchup between these teams last night. Popped up. Wyatt under it makes the catch. But the bats are hot. Tried to warn you. Zach Reams. Oh no, getting all of it. And just like that, the Red Raiders off to a four, nothing statement. Tim Tadlock with a confident stare. It's his Red Raiders offensive juggernauts. That's what they look like at the top of the first. Open up and give Davis Martin the four nothing lead. And the junior from San Angelo is ready to tow the rubber. He needs to start his season over. It, it, he is, was thrown into the mix as the number one starter. He had a really good freshman and sophomore campaign. So just start it over. He struggled. He's got to have a good mix. Mix in your fastball. Use all of your pitches. And then the last part, attack now. You've been staked to a 4 nothing league. Attack, downhill, keep a good pitch mix. The moment will not be a matter as Davis makes a throw on the run to get Tyler Fitzgerald go back to the freshman year for Davis Martin and his 10th win of the season was truly historic as it was the first ever win for Texas Tech in the College World Series as he picked up the W against Florida so he is primed for stages like this been there done that Jake Schneider showing bunt. Josh Young came crashing from third base. Well, Snyder is an excellent bunter, and he's had a fantastic tournament so far. This top two guys in this order, Fitzgerald and Schneider, have set the table for these middle three. Man, Wyatt, Stores, and 
I'd say what they're as good as any three together. These two teams have really good three, four, and five hitters. But do not ignore number seven in the lineup for the Cardinals, Danny Oriente. Seven hits. It's a 636 average through three games here in Lubbock. Just missed with the change right there. There's going to be about 3,000 umpires here tonight. Like there were last night. And they tend to disagree with many calls. Like that one. Full count, one out to Jake Snyder. A 15-hit performance for the Cardinals in their earlier win against Kent State. Most of them singles as that's past the glove of an outstretched Josh Young. Jake Snyder is impressive. I mean, he is pesky. He lets the ball get deep. He won't go outside the zone. And then right here, he just shoots this ball the other way by diving Young into left field. Four for seven today alone. And Snyder has the wheels. 24 of 28 stolen bases. Devin Mann reached all six times up earlier against the Golden Flashes. So we'll talk a lot about Texas Tech lineup. No slouch here for Dan McDonald to center field. Cody Farhat tracking back and has it for the second out. Well, Devin, that's the first time he's had to go back to the dugout. He's used to making a left turn. Yeah. Had a busy day on the bases. First time he's been retired. Here's Logan Wyatt. No one had a better start to this Lubbock Regional than Wyatt. First two times up here at Rip Griffin Park. He left it promptly. A grand slam in the first inning of the opener against Kent State. And a three-run shot in the second inning. I like what I see from Martin so far. He is attacking downhill, using his fastball. He's got to mix in his change, which he's done. Already. We've already seen that. And the shift is on here for Wyatt. With Klein basically playing a shallow right field. Gabe Holt is way back there. A few steps in front of the warning track. Boy, it's really difficult to see right now as a hitter. Didn't look that way to the Red Raiders, but it's hard to see spin right now as a hitter. And that's because of the shadow. Shadow. Working outside. And it's 2 1. It's a big night for the Big 12 as well. Oklahoma in action against Mississippi State in their regional final. Texas will play Indiana in the regional final tonight. Baylor has been eliminated today. Rip foul. Hello. Look out. Oh, no. I believe a child was just struck with that line drive and he is being held and carried out at this moment. And everyone is paying attention to the young boy. It's an emotional situation as a player. You, if you're Logan Wyatt, it, it's as an ex-player, it has happened to me a, more than I'd like to remember of, of hitting balls hard, pull foul, and hitting people. It's, it's, it's emotional because you got to try to forget it and get back in the box, and but it you, you can't help but think about it. Snyder in motion, non-factor as that is a walk. 
And we're thinking about that youngster right now. Absolutely. He is receiving medical attention, hoping obviously for the best for him and his family. Brings up Josh Storrs. Storrs has also been a tough out. He's got a knack for getting on. He's now reached safely in 46 straight games. Longest such streak for Louisville since 2000. Got a this great... is a big moment here. Yeah, you'd love to answer. It's changed the momentum, even if you just got one. has got such great pitch recognition you just don't seem very often go outside the zone now he's not biting he ain't taking that bait got to bring it to him and when you do bad things usually happen strike one he didn't think so he's asking right there his turn to say, where is that? He didn't think that pitch was a strike. Right to the glove of Young. Stay right there. Two on, but nothing on the board for the Cardinals. As Texas Tech will go to the second, trying to add to an early four-run lead. Texas Tech hosting a regional for the third year in a row. Eighth regional championship game. Twice they have advanced to the Supers. And that history all under Tim Tadlock. And even numbered years, if you notice that. So you're saying 14, it's going to be a good year. Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if you look at those things, the times that they have advanced, then, then what even, are you saying? Well, even numbered years. They have had success. For a while, the San Francisco Giants were winning championships on even numbered years. Every time that Texas Tech has been in the Supers, they've advanced to Omaha. Here's the center fielder, Cody Farhat. That bends in. One, two. Four run first inning. For the Red Raiders, started off with back-to-back -back walks to Holt and Klein. Young drove in one with a single to right. Reams, the big blow, driving in three. And that could have skimmed the gray pants, but Farhat does not get the call. Very close. This is low and inside. It's a full count. Got to make a pitch here. Can't start your second frame with a free pass. Hit batter and a walk. Started the first. Far hat to right field. The wind will take this one and it will carry it out of the yard. The second home run for the Red Raiders. You run out of room quick here at Griffin Park, especially with the breeze like tonight. We talked about being able to keep the ball in the ballpark. They haven't been able to do it so far. Red Raiders have hit two out. Accounted for four of the five runs via the homer. That's how you make your statement. Really a complete 
offense for Texas Tech. They've got guys that can run, hit for average, drive in runs. Leave the yard. Number nine hitter Braxton Fulford, starting catcher for the Red Raiders. Now, is this a conscious effort to work the ball to right field? Oh, I, I don't think so, but I think you're looking for out over the plate, no, no doubt about it. It, it. You understand that it's carrying that direction. and Again, elevate and out over the plate. And the third strikeout for Detmers. 186 home runs in the NCAA tournament. Last season, 200, the most in the BB Core era, which started in 2011. So, on the way to crushing that mark. All the way back to the top of the order now. Can't lose focus here. You got to keep try to grind it. Gabe Holt, one of those guys that just looks fast. Man, with the sliding stop to Logan Wyatt. And there's two down. That's a nice play. Louisville plays on turf at home. So you, 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 you get used to learning how to play on it and what to do and what you can do. And man does a nice job understanding he can slide his body. He doesn't have a long throw and makes a nice play right there. What do you think the preference is? If you asked college infielders, you want to play on dirt? natural gas or on the artificial stuff what do you think they'd say you know i don't i really don't know that, that answer i, I uh, the particular turf this field turf a tough play here oh no gets away from levy and heads up base running into second is brian klein You were right, tough play, and it's right at the edge of that shadow. Not sure what he's doing. As this ball goes up right here, you know it's a tough play. Wind's pushing it back. You overrun it, and then the last minute, that spin brings it back behind you. And they're giving Klein credit with a double. Well, I don't believe Levy made contact with it. Now you pick your poison. First base open, and it's Josh Young. But you have Grant Little right behind him. Young with an RBI single to right field his last time up. Give the Red Raiders the early lead, 1-0. That skips for ball one. Five for seven in this regional. Has not been struck out. He's drawn four walks. Slicing, but crushed. He hits everything hard. Even the foul balls are impressive. Well, he stays inside the ball so well. He's got his routine, his idea. Got to crowd him, I think, is the way to pitch him and force him to get to the ball inside, not letting him extend. Chopped. Levy will have another chance, and this throw is on the money. But another one added to the tally. Cody Farhat sent it up to the breeze and let the Lubbock win do the rest. Gotcha. First stop of the road to Omaha in the regional round. Winner 
here in Lubbock. We'll take on the winner of the Athens Regional, Duke and Troy. Going at it right now with the winner advancing to take on Georgia. And that one goes off the shin of Davis Martin. But right to awaiting Cameron Warren. Stretch it out a little bit. Well, it goes 1-3 on the on the score sheet on the put out, but he never touched it with his glove or threw it with his hand. That, that hurt. That'll take, that's going to take a little bit for him to, because that caught him right on the outside of that ankle on the bone. He will feel that. That might be something that stiffens up as the game goes on. We'll have to watch it. Just took a deep breath. Went to his knees to collect himself, and he's back at it. Facing Danny Oriente. Strike one. He did not look good delivering that. Oriente with at least two base hits in every game so far. And I think Oriente wanted a little more time stepping into the box as Martin is working quickly. Uh, it fouled him up now. That's filthy. Yeah, he's still limping around. You have to watch this as this goes on. This could be something that does stiffen up. As it caught him right on the outside, the bone of the ankle. It's going to bring up Pinkham, and Davis Martin wants to go now. Yeah, and he's really starting to become more and more ginger on that ankle. It looks pretty good right through here. Comes down, that's his push off foot. Klein, calling it, got it. Three up, three down. Despite one liner off the ankle of Davis Barton. Fans here at Tech love it. And the two, Red Raiders up by five. The Division One baseball. Joanne in marketing. Switch to Sprint and get 50% off a Samsung Galaxy S9 lease. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. More coverage of the Division One Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets. Go to NCAA.com. I want to just keep you up to date on the little boy that was hit by a line drive down the right field line earlier in the game. He was taken off from sight in an ambulance. What we were told, he was loaded into the ambulance, not in a hurry. And if we get more information, we will pass it along with you. Thoughts and prayers with that tough young man. Grant Little will lead off for the Red Raiders. Four in the first, one in the second. But Little will strike out victim number one by Detmers. And Detmers struggling with the control. 2-0. Three for eight with three driven in. Here in this Lubbock Regional. Path started for Texas Tech with a 9-2 win against New Mexico State. And Little slaps one with authority in his center field. Zach Reams coming to the plate right here. He gets a fastball middle in and he didn't miss it. Gets out of here in a hurry. How did you hit it? Low and hard or high and far? I'll take the ladder. Five driven in. All of them via the long ball. First pitch ball. Texas Tech drew nine walks last night in the win against Louisville. Yeah, they really had a tough time commanding. Uh, it's, it, 
as Louisville. They, they struggled late in the elimination game yeah. earlier today with command. So you can't afford a good hitting teams. You cannot afford to give the free passes. Make them earn it by swinging the bat. Foul to the left side. Way out of play. Now late in that game against Kent State, the Golden Flashes were able to make it a four-run game. A home run from Pete Schuler. His third of this Lubbock Regional. But then the Golden Flashes struggled with command as they made a move to the bullpen. And Louisville tacked on insurance runs. And won that game 12-6. One, two here to Zach Reams. Good glove, but foul. That's a good note for young players right there. You go make the play, let the umpire make the call. Because if you, if you think, well, that's foul, it, you may be wrong. That's go ahead and basis. make the play and let them make the call. Cardinals defense has also been a bit shaky here in Lubbock. Has not been. We had two pass balls in the first. Yeah, trademark type of defense that you expect under Dan McDonald. I say those pass balls were significant early on, combined with the struggle with control on a line to right field and just foul. He's on it. Squaring him up. Just gonna get him straight. And that just had enough hook and the wind pushing in that direction. Just made that ball hook foul right at the last 10 feet to get into foul territory. Because it, all intents and purposes, it looked like it was gonna be a fair ball for sure. Side. Didn't get the call. He wanted it right there. That's one of them where he definitely thought he got it. Got the fastball by. Look at the pitch total. 59 now for Detmers. And it's a full count. I think Little will be off with the pitch here. Keep applying the pressure. Pitch number nine coming up to Reeves. Already one home run and just missed extra bases in this at bat. Last night, Texas Tech put an end to an unreal streak of 16 straight wins by Louisville in the regional round. Then they were faced with the possibility of losing back-to-back -back games in the regionals for the first time since 2002. Did not let that happen. And control issues once again. Reams staring down death on his way to first. It's a breaking ball. Absolutely had nothing to do with that. I mean, he's trying to throw a slider and it just didn't break. If you're going to have a purpose with a pitch, it's not going to be something you're throwing slow. You're going to have some velocity behind it. I think you got to make a move here. And here comes McDonald.
activity. Now in the Louisville bullpen is Brian Hoeing. Starts to warm up. So again, just to reiterate, there's no intent. Oh, absolutely not. He's trying to throw a breaking ball for a strike. He's trying got, to put it underneath it. We got a pitching change now. Here comes home out of the bullpen for the Cardinals. Will it be too late? However, still early, but Red Raiders firmly in control. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. Starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, Longhorn Network, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. So rough start on the bump for Reed Detmers. Still on the hook for the runners on first and second. A single and a hit batter have put them there. So he walked one, hit two, and could not miss the barrels of the Texas Tech bats. So it will be an opportunity here for Brian Hoeing to try to put some stop to this run by Texas Tech. Well, this is a young man that, that's got really good stuff. He's got a live fastball in the low 90s. It's got some movement away from the left-handers into the right-handers. Get his breaking ball down. At times he has struggled with that breaking ball, but he's got an outstanding fastball. Boy, they need somebody to come on to be lights out from this point on. Well, I don't know if there's a relief pitcher in America that has been more lights out than Hoeing recently. His last 29 innings pitch is a .62 ERA. That's two earned runs in 29 innings. He'll face Cameron Warren. Struck out his first time up. To the left side. Fitzgerald falling and making the throw. What a play by Tyler Fitzgerald at short. That's a good play by Levy, too. I mean, you hard to find the bag there. To get to it by Fitzgerald. Have the presence of mind that you're going to go to third. And then have your third baseman in position as he goes over to be able to be on the bag and have that bag and get the throw. That's a big out. Here's Michael Davis. Fouled out his first trip up. First pitch strike from Hoeing. Two good breaker balls for a strike. That set up, sets up his really good tailing fastball. Outside for ball one. Hitting 90 on the gun. Reams on second. Warren on first. And that misses to make it 2 1. Davis just missed a home run on the first day of this Lubbock Regional. When it was hot, hot, hot. Mid 150s. The on-field temperature on the first day of this regional. More activity there for Pinkham. He's been a busy man. And it's a 3-1 count now for Davis. What are you sitting on here? Fastball. I'm hunting it. Off the middle. Hoeing gets one. And it's out of the glove of Wyatt. Oh, my. He gives that first baseman a look. How Got could it. you let me down? Well, this, 
the lob to second by Hoeing was not great, but you got to give Fitzgerald credit to be able to make that play, and that ball just popped right out of his glove. That's a huge mistake. He got a double play. You got to get out of the frame and don't get it done right there. You talked about it. Haven't been good defensively in this regional. And it's a first and third with two outs for Farhat. First pitch strike. And it's not like they've changed up anything or they have de-emphasized defense or put their priorities anywhere else. I mean, the first thing that I heard Coach McDonald talk to the guys about out here in their first day in Lubbock was playing defense. And that wins in the postseason. This should do it. Fitzgerald on the run and the squeeze from Logan Wyatt. Texas Tech, 5 nothing. edge going to the bottom of the third. Indiana defeated Texas A&M, eliminating the Aggies earlier today. So the Hoosiers will take on Texas in the regional final. And we already have two national seats done, FSU and Coastal Carolina. Clemson, number 10 national seed, trailing Vandy and North Carolina State, down 6-0 to Auburn in the fourth inning. And it was a dubious start for the Wolfpack in their regional as they opened up with a loss against Army able to beat Army earlier today to set up that matchup in the regional final. Stanford, a number two overall national seed, it have, will have to win out. Uh, there. They won today, but they've got to win tonight and tomorrow against Cal State Fullerton. Just stand alive there is Justin Levy. Keep our eye on Davis Martin. He was hit with a liner yeah. off the ankle, off the bat of Drew Campbell. An inning ago, we saw him, and it looked like that ankle was tender. He's had a little bit of a break. And that is a nice poke to center field by Levy. Well, Martin's done what I felt like he needed to do, and that was establish strike one. And he's seven of nine hitters that have come to the plate. He's got ahead of them. So he's got to keep his pitch ahead, keep his mix going. Levy with only his second hit of the Lubbock Regional. Back to the top of the lineup, and Tyler Fitzgerald grounded out to short his first time up. There you see it, non-face, seven. He started with strikes. Fouled out of play. That's eight out of ten. That's getting the, That's getting it done. That's. Especially when you look at the scoreboard. Now, in a nothing nothing game, you think, well, you know, I don't want to serve up a first pitch home run, but when you got a five nothing lead, attack. Misses low. What pitch has looked the best for Martin? Well, he's a fastball guy. There, there's no doubt about it. It, it. But when he's going good, he, he's able to. To mix in his change with a good delivery with his change, and then he's got a he's got a tight slider that it's at times doesn't have a lot of depth to it. When he's good, it's got some depth, and that means not only going across but going down. And that's when that pitch becomes swinging really problematic. Two one here to Fitzgerald. Center field, Farhat is back, makes the catch on the run. Can't hit a ball any harder than he did right there. Just the wrong direction. I mean, anything to center, left center and left, the ball's going to get knocked down. He just put a charge into this, but dead into the breeze. And it comes back to Farhat. Yep, right there to him. You can see it knocked down. You can just tell the way the trajectory of the ball's going down. It, it's being pushed down. Now Farhat will shift over to his right, closer to left field for Jake Snyder. Jake Snyder, first base hit for the Cardinals. Single to left in the first. Hey. 
Snap throw back down first. And that's a quick tag by Ward as well. Just getting back is Justin Levy. Levy is somewhat of a threat on the bases. Seven of nine. Well, if you play for Louisville, you're going to be able to run. You better be a threat. Because they're going to they're going to try. Very aggressive, holistic offensive approach. Young bumbles it. Too much speed down the line. And, yeah, he called it. Jake Snyder is safe. And Young has been really good at third base in this regional. First miscue from him. Well, you're, you're in, in a little bit because of the bunt. So when you're in, then all of a sudden, you see him in front of the back. He's in that in-between hop, low. So if he's back at normal depth, that's a nice high hop. But with the speed of Snyder, once that ball's bobbled, it's going to be tough to get him. So one out, two on. And it's Devin Mann. Now can you take advantage of it here now if you're the Cardinals? These were the situations that the first matchup against Texas Tech, they fell, and it was bad. First 17 opportunities with the runner in scoring position did not come through. Ended up the game two for 19 with runners in scoring position, and the two hits they got came with two outs in the ninth inning. Cardinals just need that one to get this offense back on track. They were really good in two games against Kent State. They did a really good job getting lead runners on. Against Tech, couldn't drive them in. Young, Corral steps on the back across the diamond. And Ward was in defensive mode there. Slapped that ball down, at least kept it in front of him. And there's two outs. Well, going to your right, you can't go to second base. You think, well, why do you go to second? You got to go to the bag right here. And nice preparation to throw. I give him credit. He got a chance to get the double play because he was ready to throw as soon as his left foot got on the back, throwing on the run. A little bit of a short hop. Warren couldn't make the pick. So Cardinals not coming through when they need it the most. Shift is on once again for Logan Wyatt. First pitch strike from Davis Martin. Martin, a former freshman All-American, when he led the Big 12 with a 10-1 record. It's back in 2016. Also first team all Big 12 that year. I mean, I know that's one of those stats, wins, loss, it can be really deceiving, but when you're 10 and 1, it shows that you're coming out and giving your chance, team a chance to win every time you're on that bump. And he's done it thus far. Takes care of that, a little leap, and a toss to Warren. Two were on with only one out. Cardinals still with zero on the board. Texas Tech out to the early 5-0 lead. It started off the bat of uh, first team all Big 12 member Josh Young. He drives in Gabe Holt. And then another crushing blow by Zach Reams all the way to the track and field facility. Second inning, getting more. Cody Farhat. Delivering a shot that got into the jet stream and did not come down before and it left the park here at Rip Griffin 345 has been awesome the rest of the team Not quite as dominant, but it just takes one like Cody Farhat hitting that eight spot and that really has helped Be that difference maker the power surging for the Red Raiders One series this year against Kansas State they had nine home runs Well, there's been 190 <laughs> and, and there's these regionals across the country. So the homers back Good balance too Well, I'm a hitter so I think you could go to the minor league oh. ball and get just a little more 
So do you like the way the game was played before the BB Core oh, bat yeah. was introduced? Uh, well, I like the heck of a lot better than when the BB Core bat was before the switch to the baseball. Yeah. You know, that was just that was just bad. I don't care how much you love pitching and defense. Slapped, Levy, ranging, and recording the out. Texas Tech across the board, they are top 10. Second nationally in slugging percentage, now in runs per game, and OBP, and eighth in batting average. Well, that's how you get to 8.4 runs per game. Only Big 12 team hitting north of 300 this season. That's what Tim Tadlock is known for. Six years as an assistant at Oklahoma. All six years, the Sooners batted better than 300. That's some consistency. Proof is in the pudding with that man right there. They got the right one here in Lubbock. Former shortstop. 1990 and 1991 for the Red Raiders. His final season, first time that Tech has won 40 games in a season. And they've now done it. 15 times. It's a good fit. For this part of Texas, it's got that draw. Loves them some deer hunting. Loves baseball, and he's all Texas Tech. Really can't ask for a better mix for this program. And he's winning, which is always that's the most always important. good. Got two fantastic head coaches squaring off here. They do it with different personalities, different styles, but the results have been very similar. McDonald has been on the job a little while longer. His respective program, but he is the reason Louisville is consistently here. Base hit to left for Gabe Holt. Holt, the Big 12 freshman of the year. Only second time ever one program has produced the freshman of the year in back to back seasons as Colt, excuse me, Holt followed Josh Young. Brings up Brian Klein. May not be big home run hitters, but if you miss upstairs to any type of hitter, usually it's going to turn into the base hit, and that's exactly what happened. That ball was up, wasn't hit that hard, but because it was up, he was able to get some of the barrel to it. Holt has not been caught stealing this season. Stay put as Hoeing brings it over for strike one. Right. Klein, four for 11 in the regional. He is driven in two. And the infield double. Didn't go very far. The one that Levy had to crash on. I hit ball, popped in the air. And it came down right on the edge of where that sun met shade. Now, much easier to see now as a hitter. Shade into the outfield. The difficult still on the outfield. His left field is really tough. Snyder is with each pitch puts his hands up wearing sunglasses, but he's got his hands up trying to read it off of the bat. Quick move by Hoeing. Holt is able to get back. Yeah, he's using that slide step really well, too. Coming to the plate. Big guys a lot of times are, are not very fast to the plate. And he's 6'6. Six, six. Swing and a miss, one, two. Owen came in last inning 
with the first two batters for Texas Tech reaching. Came in for Reed Detmers after he hit Zach Reams. He got three straight outs. Inside and just yanks that to right field. Back to back singles, one to left, one to right. And Tech cooking once again. Well, this is a really nice job of hitting right here. Setting on the fastball, tried to move it in on him. Just pulled his hands inside. Took the barrel right to the ball. And it's not just any two runner on situation with one out. It's two on for this man going through his pre swing process. You'll see him do that every time before stepping into the box between pitches. As a phrase, he repeats to himself a spot on the bat that he locks in on. High and tight, ball one. Try to overthrow the breaking ball that time. When you overthrow it, it means you, you just try to get out front and your arm can't catch up where you can bang the hammer. Breaking ball, you got to really pull down on at the end and it stayed upstairs. Tim Tadlock will tell you that Josh Young will simply outwork you. He's got the physical tools, but the dude works. And Pinkham barely gets a piece, keeping Holt on second. Young drove in the first run of the game with a single to right in the first. That's, I believe, it's, as his career progresses, he's going to have to learn to get to. Now, he's learning. He's, he's better at it now than he was as a freshman. The pitchers try to crowd him inside with the fastball. He gets such great extension, Lowell, that you got to keep him from getting extended. Ball is in strike two. Young has not struck out in the Lubbock Regional. Owing has him on the ropes, but tough to knock this man out. Slow one to Levy to second. High throw and off the back and coming home is Holt. He did not hit the brakes. Wyatt dropped his head after stepping off of the bag and did not see Holt until he had already scored. Everything worked out great there, except he didn't pay attention. Great pitch to Jamming. The relay to first from Mann, and you see Wyatt, he just turns, doesn't look at the guy coming to the plate got to anticipate especially with great speed what's the phrase speed kills never had a bad day does not slump Little had a single up, the middle in the third. Chop sat foul. I mean, it's one thing to be fast, but to be heavy on the bases, completely different. And Gabe Holt has. But well, he hustled those. hustled the third, and his head coach knows that. And you know, and that's a decision you can't wait on Coach Tadlock to tell you to go. You got to be rounding that back, thinking, anticipating, say, hey, you know, something might happen here. And, Goes got back to a, got a high throw and snuck in there. Tadlock's comments in terms of what well, we asked him, what, what does he look for when he recruits? Just guys instincts that play the game and know what they're doing. It's not a magic formula. It's find the best players. 
not necessarily the dudes that are the biggest have all the measurables. But the guys that play hard and know what they're doing. It's working. It was a little thing, but the way that they showed up on the field after that first game, there was definitely a sense of urgency. Young doesn't have great stolen base numbers, but he is pretty speedy for his size. Good base runner. Seen him score a couple of times from first. Owen's got it. And that does it, but aggressive. Hensie base running by Gabe Holt leads to another run, and it's six nothing, Red Raiders. Yes, Omaha, we are coming soon. Eight teams will make that trip to the Hallow Grounds. The ultimate stage for college baseball starts with the regional round. 16 teams advance to the Supers. Texas Tech, Louisville, both on the cusp as the first pitch. It stores, and Davis Martin puts the leadoff man on. So Tech needs a win here to advance. For Louisville, they would need to win tonight and come back tomorrow with a win. But that's what Storrs does. He extends his lengthy reaching base streak. As he is the ultimate table setter, even from that five spot. He's now reached in 47 straight. At down six nothing, he's still going. Thirty six of forty three on the year. Campbell stands in. A little close. Jumpy at first. Uh, Warren dropped the ball reg regardless yeah. there. So 122 times this season. I, I, and they're only fifth. That's a bunch of stolen bases. No action from Storrs here. As Martin starts off Campbell with the ball. Campbell four for 13. In this Lubbock Regional 0 for 1 tonight with the ground out. It was the ball that went right back to Davis Martin and ricocheted off his ankle. Does it look like Martin is okay? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's finishing his delivery. I, I don't think he's tightened up at, at this point. And he's done a nice job, again, of getting in the, ahead of the counts and forcing hitters to be more defensive where they can't be as as aggressive. Young to climb and Warren has to come off the bag, but they do get one. Would have been a tough turn. Well, Campbell really gets down the line well, too. You can see the feed right here. Get it to him in a hurry, right there. Stops and plants. I I don't think they get him even if the throw's online, but Warren does his job, especially up 6 nothing. Don't let that ball by you. What's he chewing on over there? A mouthpiece? 
Almost looked like Les Miles with a big chunk of grass he was chewing on. What is that? Might be a straw. He is chewing on a straw. Well, Josh Young told us he is one of the most laid back dudes. Team Jokester. Good athlete. All state basketball player. Pass the glove of Young. And he just keeps on ticking, doesn't he? Boy, he's had an outstanding regional. And Danny Oriente, 8 for 12 now. He's had at least two hits in every game he's played. That's the first tonight. Not too bad for your number seven hitter, huh? And we're having a pinch hitter here. And it is Zach Britton. Who has started a couple of games behind the plate. He also came in for Pinkham in last night's game against Texas Tech. It's two for nine in this in the tournament. To the right side. Warren's got it. Over to Martin. And that is a highlight play for the big first baseman, Straw and all. Well, we said he was athletic. <laughs> right on cue, huh? Lays his body out, able to get to it, gets up, and I like the underhand perfect feed. And Martin right there to make the play. And then watch Martin at the end. Pitchers, man on second. Find that runner. You see him turn around, and ready to go. And with the speed of Campbell, who knows? That could have saved a run. So it's two outs for Justin Levy. He's had his struggles at the plate in this regional. One for 13 coming in. Yeah, he can change that with a base hit right here, though, and get a couple. He's already got one in this game, his second other regional. Up the middle, the bare hand does not work. On the run, Davis whipping it to Ward. And that is some standout defense by Texas Tech. Louisville looking for a response. We'll talk to their head coach, Dan McDonald, when we return here in Lubbock. Regional championship here in Lubbock, Texas. Red Raiders up on Louisville, 6 nothing. We welcome in the Cardinals head coach, Dan McDonald. Coach, from your perspective, what's been the difference thus far? Well, obviously, we let him get off to a hot start there. We had a HBP. We had a walk. Uh, this big, strong guy in the plate ran in the one. And, you know, before you know it, you're down 4 nothing. Um, we've had good at-bats. Uh, similar to last night, we get guys on base every inning. And uh, we're, we're one swing away, you know, one good at-bat. One more good at-bat. We need a ball in the gap. Uh, we need one over the fence. We need something because we're close. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, your opportunities. It really, it's, the mound's been stabilized. He's done a, always done a nice job since coming into the game. I tell you, uh, this is the role he's flourished in, you know, and uh, he's been phenomenal the second half of the year uh, in this long relief role. And, uh, but still, man, these guys are tough. I mean, offensively, they move the ball. Uh, they use the whole field. Uh, they don't strike out uh, as much as you would think, as big and physical and as hard as they swing. Um, you know, so we just got to keep fighting, that's all. Hey, Coach, we hear the crowd getting into it. So used to playing at home in this regional round. What do you think the difference is playing on this level when you have to go on the road? Well, uh, when you go on the road, you, you definitely got to pound the ball in the zone. You just cannot give walks, HBPs, or errors. You know, I think at the end of the day, you got to make them earn it. And these guys are good enough to still earn it, but, you know, that first inning, uh, we give them some momentum with the leadoff HBP, and then we walk a guy, and then you got to pitch the Jung, who's phenomenal. And then, like I said, the big strong guy runs in the one, and and um, you just got to play clean. You don't have to play perfect, but man, you got to play clean. Well, coach, we appreciate your time. You got it. Thanks for everything. One of the best in the business, right there.
And McDonald, head coach of the Louisville Cardinals, only once in his 12-year run have they missed the NCAA tournament. And more often than not, I mean, this is a run that's going to the Supers. And then in to Omaha. Last night, first regional loss since 2012 in Tucson. That eliminated that run, put it to an end. 16 straight wins, though, on the regional level. Big cut there from Warren. And when McDonald was talking about the big guy running into it, the big guy just ran into another one that stayed within the park, but Zach Reams with a double to left field. And, and, and uh, Coach noticing the same thing that I noticed. Tech does a good so job of staying inside the ball. They, you can't play them to pull or think they're going to pull it. They're not pull hitters. They, you know, if you pitch them up and away, they're going to go the other way. And that ball was a fastball up and out of the plate. Reams did, went with it to left field. What did you think about everything he said in terms of the difference playing at home or the road? Well, it, it, it is true. I mean, the one thing you 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 must do is you don't you cannot give a home team playing in their home park free stuff, passes, extra bases, miscues, throw to the right back, uh, keep the double play in order. You have to you have to play clean baseball and especially on the mound and force them to swing the bat and earn it. Now, a lot of times teams can still earn it. Wyatt makes a grab and Warren is down. And that's probably the most eye-opening aspect of the way that Louisville has played. When they've been good, they've been good and clean and and really their, their opening win defense was as important as anything else against Kent State. But when they have struggled, it's been in the areas where this team and program typically doesn't struggle. Pounding the zone. Usually they do not struggle having guys that will attack the strike zone. And the defense has been poor. It's been some base running mistakes as well. They are always ultra aggressive on the bases and that's a natural byproduct at times of being that aggressive. Typically don't see it at this stage. Oh, they've missed some signs. That's something you don't see very often. Ripped, should hold up for Stores, and he drops it. Stores drops it, and Reams into third, and another aggressive turn, and Davis into second. When it rains, it pours. Well, you're Cardinals see, cannot buy a brick. Not going to see this very often, but he's looking right back into the sun, on the run right here, looking in that sun, and just, I'm telling you, by the time he should, that was just about the right height with the, the sun is right in his eyes when he looks at it. I'm not going to make that as an excuse, but you got to catch that baseball. Ball is popped out of the mid of center field, popped out of the mid of wide over at first base. That brings up Cody Farhat, who already has left the yard. Four errors. Bringing down the fielding percentage to 968. And the infield is in for Louisville. Uh, two in the first game and two in this ball game. Come on, Cody. <laughs> you, don't, you just don't see that. See that happen. Boy, you need a punch out right here. I, I just, you just feel like can't be chasing. Six is going to be hard to get back in the game. To left field. Snyder falls and makes the catch, but job done. Another run scores. Seven nothing. Texas Tech. Sack fly. RBI. Farhad has driven in his second. Uh, this is coming out of the shadow. Snyder gets to it. Has to leave his feet to make the play. No chance 
I don't think it was deep enough. I don't believe he was going to be able to make any play at the plate anyway, but should be out of the inning. Instead, a run across. Brings up the number nine hitter, Braxton Fulford. He's 0 for 2. Fulford, Warren Davis, the only Red Raider still looking for hits. Eight and all. And working the extra base hits. Line with the double. Reams with the double. Also a home run. Farhat with the home run. But Hoying has Fulford 0 2. Defensive swing, but it gives him another shot. Okay, that's a hanger, too. That ball was up. I'd like to have that one back. That does it for Fulford. But another successful inning, late in the run for the Red Raiders. The sack fly makes it 7-0. We'll talk to Tim Tadlock when we return. Texas Tech won win away from advancing to the Super Regionals. They're up on Louisville 7-0. We welcome in the Red Raiders head coach, Tim Tadlock. Coach, first thing I saw about your team as soon as the early game ends. I mean, as soon as as it ends they were on the field with intensity to take the dugout what did you see from this group and the way they arrived today well it was uh we knew we were going to be visitors and we knew it was going to be a quick turnaround 55 minutes between games and we we tried to make a point to make sure we we're ready and uh you know so far it's been all right it's you know baseball is a crazy game you gotta keep playing it's been all right yeah, it's been all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know coach, coach. I got you. Hey, coach, we're, we're, I just for Davis. This is a really important. I feel like that he sort of restarted his season, so to speak, tonight, and he's really come out and pounded the strike zone. Yeah, he yeah, and the secondary pitch has been there tonight for the most part and uh we really like to see us go play some defense behind him and we we've actually extended him a couple of innings. What makes Josh Young special? Uh, he's just a great kid. Uh, really likes to play. Uh, really likes to work at it. Never thinks he's there. He's a kid that, you know, is going to try to get better each day. Uh, and, and he loves playing. He comes from a family. Uh, you know, his dad's a high school baseball coach and just really loves to play the game. So it's in the bloodlines. Coach yes, Tadlock, we really do appreciate your okay. time. You bet, guys. Appreciate it. So the all right start for Texas Tech up 7-0. Well, that's that's a ball coach. Of course. He's, of course. He's still good. <laughs> He's in work mode. Still got 15 outs to oh, get. Oh, yeah. And, and that's one of the, the mottos of this team. I'll respect the 27 outs. The team understands you got to finish it. I, I, the key for me is is. It's what Davis Martin has done. He, he's come out. He's had secondary pitches for strikes. He's mixed. He's he's attacked downhill in the zone. And tough hop there. That kid's by Davis. One of those in-betweeners on a long run from Davis. Well, you, you, it's hard to read sometimes. You think that ball came off the bat hard, but it really didn't. It got in on him. So right here, you think you're going to get to it, and all of a sudden it's, it's, it's floating and you're not going to get to it. And now you've got to try to dive and catch it on the short off where you thought you were going to catch it in the air. So Fitzgerald on board, leading off with a single. Louisville also got their leadoff runner on in the third and fourth. Well, this However, is, they haven't been able to push them across. This is the inning I feel like if... Louisville is going to extend their season. This this part of the lineup, leadoff guy on. That's they need to get it done. Wyatt coming up. Yeah. 58 pitches for Davis Martin. 
And Fulford thought about giving a look to Fitzgerald. Well, Snyder plays mind games with third baseman. If you don't come in, he'll do that. Through the cap on the right side, Fitzgerald motoring to third. Now, can the Cardinals finish what they have started? They get their first two on, just like last night. Problem was after that, moving them over, driving them in. It's going to be up to Devin Mann here. Well, the table's been set, and you have three, four, five. We've talked about it the entire regional about how good they've been. Well, right now, their season's on the line. Right now, they they've got to get it done right now. In time running out for the Cardinals. They do have the confidence of knowing they've already beaten Texas Tech once in comeback fashion. March 14th up in Louisville. That game the Cardinals scored six unanswered to get the win. Have to chip away. Have an even greater run than that to get this down by seven. A one to Devin Mann. Little inside, 1-1. One, one. For the Cardinals, issues with runners in scoring position, 0 for 5. And then the line last night, 2 for 19. This is a way to change it. Little makes the catch. Coming home, the throw will not be anywhere close. And the Cardinals got to start somewhere, and there it is. Louisville on the board. They hit this ball right on the button. If this is into the gap, it's it's big time, but it was right at Grant Little. Little, and there's not anything that you can do about that. You just hit it hard and hope it finds a direction, but they do get on the board. Still not a base hit with the runner in scoring position. Here's Logan Wyatt. Tough afternoon for him over at first base. And looks at a first pitch strike. Nothing too much you can do with that one. Rick, but the shift works perfectly. And the spin from Young, hello! You don't That's see many four, five, three double plays, but Young, the third baseman, takes it and gets it. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. More coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets. Go to NCAA.com. And Law Field inside Rip Griffin Park has been rocking. And Texas Tech has led to another change for the Louisville pitching staff is Michael McAveen is the third pitcher for the Cardinals. 12th, 11th, excuse me, appearance of the season. One of those guys that has got a great arm. You can tell he's at times struggled with his command with six walks and almost 10 innings of work, but he doesn't give up many hits and he strikes out a whole lot of folks. So he's got a good live arm. And right now, Louisville needs zeros on the board. They were able to scratch one out there. But the double play took away any chance of a big inning. McAveen making his first appearance of this Lubbock Regional. Top of the lineup for Texas Tech. And Gabe Holt, he is a pest. He's already reached twice, was hit his first time up. Came around to score the first run for the Red Raiders. 
singled in the fourth. And when Wyatt stepped off the bag at first, Holt flew home to record another run. Gets all of that. That's a fair ball. Trouble with his speed. Will be held for two. Squared that one up. Well, you, you come in and you see the first pitch was 93 94. So, as a hitter, all right, I got to turn it up a little bit right here. I got to look for the fastball, and he went hunting it right there. It was up. He put a charge in it. On again with a sledgehammer. Big leg kick. Big swing from the freshman from Georgia. Georgia definitely on his mind with. The winner of this Lubbock Regional meeting up with the winner of the Athens Regional. And if it is Georgia and Texas Tech, that will be a return trip to his home state. Fifth extra base hit for Texas Tech. Three doubles and a couple of home runs. This is Brian Klein, who has one of those doubles. The infield double. Nine total. Klein has reached every time up. A walk, a single, a double. Inside, it's 2-1, and Britton wants to talk things out with McAvee. You work, and you work, and you work. In your workouts and every place else, Still, get into the environment. You have to be able to compete by throwing strikes. You just got to compete, and it's all about strikes. It's a you're you're making you're taking a hitter right now. That he he knows you got one pitch you can get over. I'm gonna look for one spot. It makes it difficult when that guy knows what's coming and knows he's looking in a, in a spot for a strike. If it's not there, he's taken. Hitters count to climb. Looking for the fastball, got it, missed it, full count. that McAveen has faced, they are on board for the grinder, Josh Young. Now you're gonna, you're into Texas Tech's murderer's row. Yeah. First two guys on and then you got three, four, five, dude. steal. Holt is in. Klein is in. Uh, this is not paying attention and Holt just recognizing that, hey they're giving me this much space. He just took advantage of it. 28 for 28 now in the stolen base department. Didn't draw a throw. Now two in scoring position. The second team baseball America, all American.
McAfee wants to restart. Young will score one. His second RBI of the evening. Put it in play, make something happen. Productive out there for Josh Young. Yeah, good pitch that time. Had he fooled out on the front side. But Tech now has scored in every frame, Lowell, except the third. Four in the first, and they just keep adding. They just keep cultivating, so to speak. Cultivating, I like it. Racing crops of runs. Well, this is farming country out on the South Plains. Little to right, slicing. Will it stay fair? No. Check on line. <laughs> to center stores. It's going to have to come in. This is going to drop. They play so deep. Talked about it before this. Series started the outfielders get so deep here and balls like that are hit off the end of the bat after big swings And you just can't get to them No man's land. It's just a no man's land 10th hit of the night For the Red Raiders Little right there realizes that Campbell can't get there And here's the big guy with a knack for running into him Zach Reeves a home run and a double it's also hit by a breaking ball from Reed Detmers. <laughs> Fooled no one. Britain with the block. And it's 1 0 to Zach Reams. Reams, a first team All Big 12 selection. To think he hit 133 last season. Big improvement going into his senior year. Really got Texas Tech off to a great start in this regional with his two round home run against New Mexico State. That was actually for him back to back home runs against the Aggies after he had a walk off home run against the Aggies in Midland earlier this year. It's the center field. It drops. It's 9 1. Stay hot, Zach Reeves. Well, he's a triple from the cycle now. You calling for it? He's going to get a chance to. He'll get another at bat for sure. Four RBI for Zach Reeves. There's times when you're just locked in and you're seeing it so well. But a really good swing on that. Warren has whittled down that straw, still chewing on it. Oh my God. Oh, 
Hopefully he's not eating it. There it is. Warren was drafted by the Yankees out of high school. Gets away from Britain. And both Little and Reeves will advance 90. Cardinals will have to bring the infield up here, too. You just, you're down eight already. You got to take a shot here and see if you can't cut this run off at the plate. A lot of pass balls, wild pitches, issues between the battery for the Cardinals in this regional. And it's 1 1 to Cameron Warren. Former NJCAA first team All American. McAveen will toss home. It's not a force play. Will he get back a close play? And they are able to get Grant Little. Well, a nice job. As he comes to the plate, he gets told he turn. Got to give it up. Britain does. Levy makes the tag. That was executed perfectly. Two on for Michael Davis. That was off the first offering. Wind has changed again, almost blowing dead straight in from center field now. To center. Stores his back and it holds just, up for him. Yes, it's just exactly what I talked about. A two spot for the Red Raiders. They've scored in every inning except the third and up by eight. Texas Tech just locked in offensively. Scored in every inning except the third, and they are up nine to one. Tournament headlines: U Dub, the number three regional seed, has advanced out of the Coastal Carolina regional. They're going to face either Stanford or Cal State Fullerton. Vanderbilt, seven home runs against Clemson. Connor Kaiser with three of them. And Clemson, not looking good. Duke, meanwhile, leading Troy 15 to six, off the back of Stores. In a win by Duke that would set up a regional final against Georgia. And that Athens winner would face the winner here in Lubbock. Well, Vandy wins that game. They have punched their ticket. That one finishes. So Georgia will play Duke or Troy, and it looks like Duke at this point in time after Duke had that epic comeback against Campbell yesterday. And Tech in Louisville. So Georgia needs one win. The winner of Duke and Troy will have to beat the Dogs twice. Tech with the win here will advance. Louisville would have to come back and win tonight and then beat the Red Raiders tomorrow. There is activity for Texas Tech in the bullpen as Tim Tadlock comes out to check on Davis Martin. Uh, it's a really good start. This crowd will recognize it. Davis Martin has struggled most of this year. This guy's got the stuff. You talked about it in his freshman campaign, freshman of the year in the Big 12. He was just outstanding. He restarted his season. He really, I, I got to give him credit. He established his fastball. He had his breaking ball for a strike, and he will get an outstanding ovation from this home crowd. And there is the passing of the torch.
Awesome moment there for Davis Mort. So many moments like that. The road to Omaha, the ESPN Networks bringing you every one of those moments. Starts with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, Longhorn Network, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the base is loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app as well. Jose Quezada in relief of Davis Martin. And what a moment for Davis Martin as he comes out and puts his Red Raiders in position to get to the Super Regionals. That is if Quezada to do what he has been brought in to do. 5'9", 175-pound senior from Mexico. Played high school ball in Colorado. Well, you can see his numbers. At times has had command problems, but he's got a good sinker, good slider. 19th appearance on the year. You can see the numbers, 1.82. Earn run average. Pitched two innings against Sam Houston State in last year's regionals. Five strikeouts and no walks. That's another part of the underlying storyline in play here in Lubbock. What happened last season against Sam Houston State? Texas Tech was in the same spot. They had two opportunities to win, one to advance, and it was the Bearcats getting the win, dogpiling right here at Rip Griffin Park, Dan Law Field. And that is a moment that whatever you can do, can't erase it from your psyche if you are Texas Tech and not sure. They want to erase in a moment like this. This was the deciding game. Texas Tech had the lead. Errors lead the runs for Sam Houston State in the final out. And that would do it. Bearcats win 4-3, to three, going to the Supers for the first time in program history. And Tim Tadlock, that's fuel for his program, especially this week. He's reminded them about the way it ended last year. Well, you, you, you try to do that. I, you know, I, I have a different mindset about that. And a lot of times uh, I look at that as you, you don't want that feeling. I, I, I don't want to have that feeling you're walking off the field when you thought you had an opportunity to put a game away. First pitch swinging the dive from Holt off the wall. Here comes Stores. Stores will check up at third, and it is a double from Drew Campbell. Campbell's had a, that's his fourth extra base hit of this regional. He's done a nice job. What a great effort trying to get to that ball by Holt. This came up short. And really for a ball that got past him, not much damage done. Well, there's not, but you got to hold it. it you got to hold to see if the ball's caught. So as a runner, you, you can't be just exploding away from first base because of the fact is, you know, he might get to it. And he almost did. There's a guy getting to it. Danny Oriente. And Oriente now with eight hits in the regional, eight of 13. Davis Martin responsible for stores over on third. Five hits allowed, one earned run, a strikeout and a walk. And gutsy as he got himself collected after taking a hard shot off the ankle. Jake Snyder with the most hits for Louisville. He has nine. Oriente right behind with eight. And that will not end up leading to anything with stores at third as Fulford gets to it in time and not really to willing to press the envelope here with Oriente drawing the walk and Britton coming up. Bases loaded, no outs. Well, the story the last two evenings in these between these two teams is Louisville's inability to get a hit with a runner in scoring position. It's happened last night. It's happening tonight. They had the scenario earlier in the game where they came away with one last inning. They need to come away with a crooked number here. And Three, four, five, here. six. Two for 19, Mark. Let's just be honest, really, for the regional, it's 0 for 23 in meaningful moments against Texas Tech. 
I mean, that game was done by the time they got those two hits with the runner in scoring position last night. Fouled off, first base side. Went after ball two. So that this is when you got to be really patient. Force him to throw you a strike. And a strike may be up that you can really do some damage with. Out of play, and it's 1-2. Loading. And it will stay there at least for another pitch. Zach Britton did not get the start. Came in for Zeke Pinkham. Who got the start at catcher. Cardinals looking for the breakthrough moment. One, two with the bases loaded, nobody out for the Cardinals. And another foul ball. Well, he's pounded him in with the fastball, gone away with the breaker ball, went away with the fastball that he fouled off. Be a big strikeout here for Quezada. So we could set up the double play to get out. It's 2-2. Two -two. And he's trying to settle himself down, talking to himself. Taking the big belly breath to slow things down. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to Zach Britton. And Britton wants time. Been a good battle. And it will continue. It's now a full count. Went right back to the breaking ball there. You almost feel like he's got to go with the fastball right here. Wants the signs again from Braxton Fulford. Right on the edge. Backdoor breaking ball. Brings it back to the outside corner. Starts it out of the way and brings it back. Gets the call. Britain did not think that it came back to the plate. Now you got the strikeout. Can you get the double play ball? You get out of the inning. First pitch ball to Justin Levy. Levy has a single up the middle. One of his two hits here in Lubbock. It has been set up by Stores, Campbell, and Oriente. Swing and a miss to make it 1-1. The table has been set. It's there for the taking. It's been a struggle with runners in scoring position. Wow. This is low 2 1. Kazada getting it up there. Not the biggest dude, but 92 on the gun. Live arm.
to center. Here's Farhat. Speed with stores. Here he comes. He's down. The throw's in time. He's safe. Just misses the tag from Braxton Fulford. And if Storrs got home, he just got it. Well, this is a wonderful throw right here from Farhat. Storrs is at excellent speed. Slides to the outside, left hand in. Yeah, I think he got the corner. Yeah, he did. Does his hand get in there? Just, just by the tag. Great slide by Storrs. He gets that left hand in clearly. Farhat made it close. Top of the lineup, Tyler Fitzgerald. But at this point in time, if you're Texas Tech, you're content having them just chip oh, away absolutely. like that. absolutely. Bases loaded, nobody out, and you're, you got a chance to get out, giving up one. Swing and a miss, making it 1-1. One -one. Zada is a very animated pitcher. Yes, he is. You like guys like that. <laughs> you, you know exactly how he feels. Let the whole world know. All eyes on him here at Rip Griffin Park. 2-1, two, two outs to the leadoff hitter Fitzgerald. And Quezada now moves one strike away from a win in this situation. Now it's at twilight time right now with high skies, so you got to Help each other out defensively. Be pointing to the baseball. Gabe Holt lines it up. The bases were loaded with no outs, and the Red Raiders hold Louisville to just one, though gladly. Trade three outs in exchange for that one run. Seven run lead for the Red Raiders. And Texas Tech dodging bullets a half inning ago. Bases loaded, no outs, and they only give up one. They've scored in all innings but one. And hey, watch the footing there for Adam Elliott, new pitcher. Doesn't have a lot of action on the mound, but when he's been in, it's been mostly positive for Louisville. Hometown kid right there and Louisville. And that's what I'm talking about. 14 appearances, seven and a third, and there's no ERA. Yeah, but the, the interesting thing about that, he has been that matchup guy for a left-hander. So he comes in, as you can tell, doesn't, doesn't last long, but now he's probably going to be to come on here to have to try to slow this thing down for more than an inning where he's going to face righties and lefties. And it's righty leading off and Cody Farhat solo home run in the second inning lofted it up and caught that breeze and got out of here. Also drove in a run in the fifth with a sack fly to left field. Scored Zach Reams. This is the spot, two balls, one strike. Breaker misses high, gotta get that down. up the bunt that's a no-no and right into the glove of Elliott two 
Duke has advanced to the regional final. 15 to 6 win over Troy. They will take on Georgia even to beat the Bulldogs in two games. Duke's been swinging the bat. 31 runs past two games. Ballpark's been playing small too. Georgia's been putting up runs too. They've had a lot of weather, obviously. Between the two of them, they've scored more than 60. Kind of like these Texas Tech Red Raiders. Pops it up. Catch is made in right field by Campbell. And Fulford is down. So as it stands, if it's chalk and Texas Tech does hold on to win in Georgia, wins the Athens Regional. The Supers would be played on the East Coast in, in Athens, the home of the Georgia Bulldogs. Yes. However, if Duke could somehow find a way to win those two games, Super would be played here in Lubbock. Correct. As Texas Tech is the number nine national seed. But Louisville, no quitting these guys. Swing and a miss from Holt. Crushed a double down the line. And inning a go. Georgia kid there. I think he'd be happy regardless if it was playing in Lubbock or playing in Georgia. One step closer to Omaha. It's the bottom line. Oh, I think if it was on I-65, he would be happy. He likes to play. Baseball on I-65 is not suggested, however. No, it's not. There's some ballparks that I've been to that have our hardest the interstate, I promise you. It's the toughest surface you played on. Fastest surface, Atlanta, Fulton County, oh, old yeah. Atlanta. Floater extension by Fitzgerald, three up, three down. A little stretch, seventh inning time. Ah. Beautiful night here in Lubbock, Texas, on the campus of Texas Tech University. Got a high stakes ball game as well, regional final. Texas Tech respecting the 27 outs, but getting awfully close to advancing to the Supers. Do the Cardinals have that late charge to make it six straight trips to the Super Regionals, which would extend their streak, which is the longest active in the game right now. Swing and a miss from Snyder. Quezada came in last inning in place of Davis Martin after he hit Josh Storrs. Cardinals got the bases loaded. And Quezada came back with a strikeout. Got a sack fly to center field and then another fly ball to right field. And only one run crossed. One, two to Snyder. Way off. Snyder, two hits already. Gives him nine for this Lubbock Regional. Into the mid of Klein and Warren for the first out. And the first time he has not reached base as Jake Snyder has really played extremely well here. Everything he could do. The big, the big disappointment is obviously you've gotten the opportunities, just haven't been able to find a way to drive anybody in. I know you talk about last night that there were two that were really useless, but that was two hits they had men in scoring position. That's the only two they have in these two ball games. Yeah. I mean, they've had their opportunity to get in the game, but just have not, just have not gotten a base hit. 
And that's the frustrating part about it. I mean, for the most part, just when you look at the box score, most of the offensive numbers are okay. I mean, they got six hits right now. And there was that stretch in last night's game, second, third, and fourth inning. Oh, they get the first two guys on. It could do could anything. could not execute bunts. And then we saw get, one runner you know, get picked, picked off. off. His, but it was be, it was predicated because the bunt was not oh. gotten down properly. Swing and a miss here from Devin May. But there are high expectations at Louisville. There are times when you have to pump the brakes and put things in perspective just a little bit. I mean, the amount that was lost over the past two drafts. Now on strikes his man. Takes a little while to reload when you're losing that many upper echelon players. Now this is a good breaking ball. Starts it out inside. It backs up, and as a hitter, I'm glad that they can't figure out how to make it back up every time, because if it does, uh, you would not get any hits. No! Shift has been effective against Wyatt. At the 4 5 yes, 3 double play last time up. Yeah, Young really did a good job of, of catching the ball and getting it turned around. Playing third base, shortstop, and maybe a little center field if they needed him. And the bunt, Quezada is going to take it. And it gets past Warren, but Wyatt is on. And that's strictly him seeing the shift. And trying to beat it. Well, if he hits the ball and it goes out of the stadium, you get one. Uh, right now, you need base runners. Anything you can do to get become a base runner, took advantage of it. He runs pretty good. He got yeah. down the line pretty well right there. Is that a ball Young needs to take? It's an easier play for Young, no doubt. But so you got the communication's got to be there. And even if Young makes that play the distance as he's covering a bare hand and throw it's going to be a close play regardless but texas tech will be content to let louisville just try to plug away and get one at a time trying to avoid the big bop like you've said numerous times, don't get beat by the solo home run. Stores pops it up out of play. This is an awful good player. He's only three for 11 in this regional. But he's reached so much, drawing walks, getting hit. your big guys and we talked about three four five for each one of these teams are the big guys texas tech's three four five is produced oh yeah difference in difference to me reason why we're sitting right here seven outs away from punching a ticket to the supers yeah your only hit from three four five thus far has been that bunt single from logan wyatt against the shift Man has driven in a run. A sack fly to center field. But Wyatt has the only hit from the heart of the lineup. 3-2. White is off. And that's a free pass issue to Storms. All right. So get out that tracker with the runners in scoring position. Because here we go again. Campbell was the first batter Quezada faced. Had a double. Oh, 
is out of misses low, pounds the mitt in frustration. Well, five hits for Campbell in the regional. Four of them for extra bases, three doubles and a triple. Here comes Matt Gardner, pitching coach for the Red Raiders. Some light stirring in the Texas Tech bullpen. Gardner is a guy that played for Tim Tadlock and Grayson. Grayson College, north of Dallas on the Oklahoma border. There he went on the play for Oklahoma State. His first season as pitching coach. He's been on the staff for a while under Tadlock. No free passes. One zero -oh to Campbell. Outside to make it two zero. -oh. Oriente is on deck. It was a single and a walk. And action in the Texas Tech bullpen as Caleb Freeman starting to get loose. Foul into the net. Freeman's the dude with the hair. I'm sure, that's how he's referred to around campus. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that flow. I think he was formerly the star of Eastbound and Down on HBO. Warren under his glove. Here comes Wyatt, the throw home. It's going to be close, but Louisville gets one, and it's a six-run game. Campbell delivering finally with the runner in scoring position. The second base hit of the night. Well, Warren gets a great effort to try to get to it, just can't come up with it. First hit of the night, as you mentioned, that's that's amazing. We're in the bottom of the seventh. That's the first one of the night. And they've had plenty of opportunities. One for eight. Here's Oriente. He's had two hits in every game except this. He's got one. Swinging through the initial offering for strike one. 46 pitches now for Quezada. Eight for 13. He's been a standout in the seven hole for the Cardinals lineup. Farhat got a late break. Holt is on it. And that's the third out. One to show for it for the Cardinals. We're into the final two innings. Texas Tech closing in on the Supers. Well, in the state of Florida, it's not just about U of F. As Stetson has advanced to the Super Regionals, one of two teams to punch their tickets thus far. The other, the Washington Huskies, the worst RPI team to get into the field of 64 as an at-large team. They go to Coastal Carolina. It's the regional, the Chanticleers were supposed to be the team to advance. And they beat UConn in the regional final for that right to move on. Yeah, and they'll be out west because it'll either be Stanford or Cal State uh -huh. Fullerton in the Supers. So they won't have to change time zones. And Cal State had one nothing over Stanford. But Jace Chamberlain last night with a walk off. Big boy. 5 0. Was, it was special. I mean, two outs, nobody on, pinch hit. 2-1 count, puts a charge into it, walks it off. A little bit here, four. Go back, kid. Boy, grind it out. Elliott back out for a second inning of work. 2-2 two -two count to the number two hitter, Brian Klein. And misses outside. Right, count is run grinding, full.
Popped up. Will it be Fitzgerald or Mann? End of the glove for Fitzgerald. That had the hang time of a great punt, about five seconds on that hang time up in the air. ESPN Network's bringing you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, Longhorn Network, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Here's Young looking at first pitch strike. Five for ten. A home run. Four driven in. Just a little ground ball to shortstop. And it was down to two strikes. It was enough to drive it around his last time up. Hit it well, but into the glove of Campbell and Wright. Here comes Grant Little. Little committed to Texas Tech way back in 2014. Sophomore left fielder for the Red Raiders. Can play some middle infield as well. 19 starts at second base last season, starting all four games of the regional there. Well, that's the other thing Coach Tadlock talks about of getting ball players. He wants guys that can play multiple positions. Uh, Holt is an infielder by trades in right field. Little, an infielder growing up, is in left field. But they could, if they need be, play in the infield. Tadlock was a middle infielder in his days. Played a mean shortstop. 2014 led Texas Tech to their first ever trip to the College World Series. He was also named the Skip Burtman National Coach of the Year. Back. Souvenir. Done a fabulous job here in Lubbock. Sixth season. Closing in on making it half of those years all the way to the Super Regionals. And then the previous two trips, it's led to Omaha. 2014 and 2016. Even number years. It's 2018. Uh oh. Sky to left field. Will it have enough carry? No, it does not. That was a mile high. And eventually, about 30 seconds later, comes down in the glove of Jake Snyder. Bottom of the eighth. Here we go. Louisville needs to get those rally caps ready. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Tickets bunched to the Supers. Vandy knocking off Clemson. Number one seed regionally and national top 16 seed 19 to 6 in the regional final to advance. The national seeds that have been eliminated, Florida State at the hands of a walk-off of Mississippi State. Coastal Carolina bounced at home and Clemson. The deed is now done at the hands of the Vandy Commodores. You know, the winner of the Florida State Regional and the Clemson Regional face each other. So if both of them gone, it's interesting who will be a host. Not my choice. Clemson now has been eliminated at home in three straight NCAA tournaments. And this is Caleb Freeman, by the way. And Caleb Freeman 
I mean, come on now. He's got the flow. He's got the stash. He's got the chains. Better be some gas to back up this look. 94, yep. He's got it all. When you make a player on MLB The Show, the PlayStation, you probably don't do that. But most of the time, you end up making the dude that looks exactly like Caleb Freeman. The hair, the stash, Wild Thing, all of it. Okay. Wild Thing 2.0. Right now, his job is to attack the strike zone. And See look. that slider right there is, is nasty too. He's got, he's got a great arm. Sophomore from Abilene. Could be a wig. Don't think so. Swing and a miss. 96. Okay. This is some giddy up. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing fancy about it. Just catch up to it if you can. This guy needs his own fan club if he doesn't already have one. Right past the glove of Klein. And that's a single for Levy. His second of the night. If you do not pinpoint the fastball, I don't care how hard you throw it, guys are going to get the barrel of the bat to it. That tells you a little bit about hitting right there. Oh, yeah. I could start swinging when you start winding up if you're throwing hard. <laughs> you, throw it it. <laughs> you throw it where I can reach it, I can get the barrel to it. Top of the lineup for the Cardinals, it's Tyler Fitzgerald, one for four. A single to lead off the fifth, and he later scored one of three runs by the Cardinals. Running out of time. Coming in hot. Breaker. Now that's a knee buckle. If you can throw that in there and as a hitter, now all of a sudden I can't start swinging when you start winding up because you're going to throw a wrinkle at me. Almost got the spot. Those 3,000 umpires haven't left. Back-to-back <laughs> -back balls, it's 2-2. Two -two. Flip of the hair and ready to get back to work. It's Gerald trying to play catch up. 93 miles per hour. Seen him hit 95 already. <laughs> Flared foul. Had him right there, just let that breaking ball up a little bit. Caught just enough of it to keep the at bat alive. 
he gets that breaking ball down right there, he gets the K. Could be the double play. Davis, climb, two more speed by Fitzgerald. That well, was a good turn. It's just that the extra hop, ball just did not have enough velocity. And that extra hop right there, that was a good turn all the way around. But this Gerald has too much speed. Stepping in is Jake Snyder. Single to left, single to right. Looking to make it double digit hits here in Lubbock. First pitch strike. 93 from Freeman. What do you think of that breaking ball? Well, I like it when it's down. It, it, he's getting on top of it. It's got some depth to it. As he progresses and matures as a pitcher, it's probably going to develop something that he can turn over a little bit to left-handers. Like right now, fastball that he can turn over would be the pitch. He tried it right there. just didn't hit his spot. Really starting to have some fun here tonight in Lubbock. Anticipating what could be the next step. After every pitch, Freeman wants to walk off. He thinks everything he throws. Well, that, was, that was at 96. I love it. Uh oh. Gets a hold of this and gone. The response from Jake Snyder. Now we talk about Velo. Snyder says, check out my exit velocity. Oh, and then blows a kiss or tells the Texas Tech fans to quiet down. So after he scored, he turned to the Tech fans on the first base side and gestured. That got a rise out of him. And things have gotten really interesting here. Two outs, a four-run game in the bottom of the eighth. Two teams with championship, postseason pedigree, making it interesting here. With a trip to the Supers on the line. Regional final here in Lubbock. Red Raiders need one. Cardinals would need two. Well, all of a sudden now, you load the bases, the tying run could come to the plate. Even though you're down to four outs offensively, you're going to take your time right here and try to calm him down. He, he was upset when he delivered the home run. We had great camera work. And then... As Snyder crosses the plate, he allows himself to uh, come under some scrutiny because <laughs> and 
Just a young man living in the moment. And here it is. So takes off the helmet. Just tells him to hush up a little bit. Well, yeah. And the Texas Tech fans simply are pointing at the scoreboard. Yeah, I bet the umpire's doing the best he can to. Uh... They did not. Did not like it. All right, well, now you got to get back in, into a frame. As a pitcher, you made the mistake. You left it in a spot that it could be hit. So you just got to get back into your zone. Now 2-0. and oh, Fire strike. Four-run game. The Cardinals with the response off the bat of Snyder. Another ball well hit to left field. Little will not get there. This is down in extra bases. Man into second with a two-out double. New life for Louisville. All of a sudden, this is a team that's it's just grinding. That's what you got to do is grind. You got to get a ball up in the breeze now if you're Logan Wyatt. This gets real interesting. Show the capability to do that. Grand slam, his first time up here in Lubbock. Three-run shot his second time. Freeman pitches with the flare. But also, now well, that makes him a target. Oh boy, good free. And there's some activity as John McMillan boy, make a pitch starts to warm up for the Red Raiders. Good. Check swing, did not go. One ball, one strike. Go free, go free. Turning up the volume, looking fastball right here. I'm chasing it, hunting it. Ripped, and it gets down in front of Gabe Holt. Here comes man. And it is a three-run ball game. Everything is now in play here in Lubbock. A two-out rally by the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, Logan looking, looking for that heater right there, and he got it up. And boy, he put a charge. He just hit it too much on the line. Holt does a nice job to knock it down, but that allows man to score easily. Got some time out as the ball is on the field. The warning track right below the scoreboard. How long do you let Freeman go if you're Texas Tech? Well, I think this is his last battle. If he, if he doesn't get him, for sure, it's, it's his last battle. And it is stores. You were asking for three, four, five to get it going, and they have responded. Did he go? He did not. Ooh. That was a break. I get a chance to see this on the side. What's the barrel of the bat, folks? In my opinion, that bat was across the plate. Outside for ball two. Little skip from Freeman. Got to collect himself now. Tech has controlled for nearly the entirety of this game, but the Cardinals have seized the momentum. Well, they scored five unanswered. Stores fouls this ball off of his foot. It's actually the top of his ankle. And it started with one run here, one run there. Now the crooked number in the eighth. 
Ooh, that's up, up nearly off of his calf. That hurts. He's been hit by the pitch. Now he hit himself by the pitch. If he reaches, the tying run comes to the plate. And this is a dangerous spot to be in with Storms. He's got leave the yard power. He was looking for it. Big pitch here. Crowd knows it too. They come to their feet. <laughs> Fouled off with white emotion. Have the courage. I think you could get him if you got the courage to go to your bender right here. Sometimes that's hard to do. Oh, yeah. Looking into a first team all ACC selection like Josh Storrs. Boy, he went to it. Storrs did a good job of fighting that off. Now it feels like postseason baseball here at Rip Griffin Park. Now you little tension. Definitely some tension. Now it's a hitter. You get back in the box hard. I've seen your fastball 3-2. I've seen your breaking ball 3-2. I think you go back to the heater now. It was a 7-0 Texas Tech lead. Now 9-6 with the eighth pitch coming from Caleb Freeman to Josh Storms. Break the ball again. All three runs scored in this eighth. Coming with two outs. It's tough luck. Has to adjust the eyes. Logan White said, I've had enough. I need, I need oxygen. Bottle of water here, please. This is going to take his time getting back to first. That's the fourth time he's had to sprint to second. He's a sneaky wheels guy. He's got some, he moves pretty good. Marathon at bat by Storrs. Pitch number 10 from Freeman. To left field. Grant Little going back. He's got room. And we're going to the ninth. But things have gotten really interesting here at Texas Tech. Reams, Warren, Davis coming up for the Red Raiders. 9-6 ball game. How did we get there? In the first inning, Zach Reams, three-run shot. Just like that, it's 4-0. He comes back up in the fifth, goes the other way. Opposite field double. And then his last plate appearance in the sixth. RBI single to center. He is a triple short of the cycle. He's been the man of the match offensively for the Red Raiders. As you can see, his numbers. Two homers in the regional. He's driven in six. This is a nine-six ball game. If you went away and are just coming back to see what the final was, well, <laughs> The Louisville Cardinals are right back in this ball game as we go to the ninth. They're the home team here. Even though we're playing at Rip Griffin Park in Lubbock. So Austin Conway comes into the game. His 20th appearance. You see his numbers. They're very good. He's got a face. 
five, six, seven do for the Red Raiders. Five unanswered runs by the Cardinals. But this has been the toughest out to come by. He's also been hit to reach safely. And Reams is having a dynamite tournament. Especially in this game, the most important stage thus far for the Red Raiders. Outside, one ball, one strike. Louisville is the home team in the first matchup between these two in this Lubbock Regional. Texas Tech won the coin toss. They were the home team. With the win, the Red Raiders will advance to the Super Regional. They will take on the winner in Athens, Georgia. Cardinals have been there five straight years. Longest active run in baseball. And it's 2-2. Two, two. You sort of peek ahead yeah. to the Louisville Knight. It will be the 6, 7, and 8 hitters do. They want to be chasing no more than three. Fouled left side. So does Louisville have another run in them against Texas Tech? Second time they met back in the regular season on March 14th. They were trailing. But came back with six unanswered to win. Cardinals have already fought off elimination once today. Reams on the line. Goodbye, baseball. He does it again. Folks, this didn't get a lot of help from the breeze. It is a line drive rocket that gets out of here in a heartbeat. Second of the night. That's a big run. Oh, yeah. And momentum now back in the Texas Tech dugout. Right off of first base. Still another tough out here in Cameron Warren. A perfect night for Zach Reeves. Two homers, double, single, hit by a pitch, scored three times. He has tied his career high with five RBI. I mean, this ball, it just gets no altitude. Lowell, it, it was just a line drive homer. Just out of here. Home run swing by Zach Reeves. Insurance. Two one from Conway to Warren. Spanked to center field. Warren going for extra bases. It gets away from Stores. And he's going for third. The throw on time, it gets away into the dugout. And it bounces off the netting. And Stores is down. Stores is down in center field. Five. Five. Get by. Tried to slide to come down to get to it. Is making the move. Get somebody up to get into the game, get ready to go. But tried to cut the ball off. Ball was a bullet into the gap, and Warren was hustling for two. And that throw was just lofted back in. That's when Warren took the extra base. Great respect here from the Texas Tech fans. In a moment of physical and emotional pain. The 
the only sound you hear is Storr's replacement popping the mitt while warming up down the third base line. They're going to get him to his feet. That's a good sign. One of the best players in America, Josh Storrs, a junior from Westchester, Illinois, limping off. With the draft coming up on Monday, this could be the final moment in his Louisville career. Lucas Dunn will take his spot in center field. So here it is off the bat of Cameron Warren. And it's well hit. Stores makes the run. He's trying to get over and cut it off. You can see right here, as he starts to slide, and then it, as he goes to go get it, you can see right there, he he's hurting. It's something. You can tell the way he was moving right there. I'm not sure the groin or a knee as he was sliding, but as he went to get it up, then the throw back in was not good and allowed Warren around the third base. Very classy reaction here in Lubbock. A young man that's a great competitor. So that's Austin Conway getting ready to go back to work in center field. It's Lucas Dunn and Michael Davis, no outs with Warren on third base. Off the middle. Conway checks Warren. Not that was not as easy. By Wyatt at first base. That was not as out. easy as it should be. Yes. Should have been much easier. Holds the runner. Throw in. Wyatt almost came off the bag. Don't commit. You stride to the ball off of first base for young first baseman. If you stride too early, Logan's stride was too early, and then he puts you in a, a situation where you got to be looking for the bag. This is Cody Farhat. Infield in. Trying to keep it at a four run game. With one out here at the top of the ninth. Whoa, way foul, but got all of that. Jones Stadium that landed. Yeah. And it's one, two. Good job. So another national seed has been eliminated. Farhat drives in Warren. Second run of an important night. For the Red Raiders. And the third RBI for Cody Farhat. Short, quick, compact swing right here. He just snaps it. They head right down on top of it. Second RBI in the night, second hit of the night. Actually, third RBI of the night. Well, that's a close play. Farhat gets back in time. Number nine hitter. 
Strax i forfullt. Offense here on the Plains. 16 hits, 26 hits, excuse me. 17 runs. I know we've mentioned it multiple times, but still with numbers like that, the difference has come down to the hits in critical situations. No doubt. And Tech has got those, Louisville has not. Lofted it to right field, long run from Campbell. He makes the catch for the second out. When you go back to the way this game started, Red Raiders with the first at bat. First batter is Gabe Holt, he's hit. Ryan Klein comes up, he's walked right off the bat. You got two guys on, and there were issues with Pinkham at catcher. It was just off at the beginning. Well, you had a freshman that, that, that understanding the composure, too, yeah. of being in a, this environment, didn't handle it very well. And then the blast from Zach Reams after Josh Young had his RBI single. Made it a 4 nothing game. Swing from Holt. And Farhat was way off first base. Gets back in time. Oh, two to the leadoff hitter, Gabe Holt. He's had an excellent night. Scored the first run of the game. Shortens that swing up the middle. The glove flip, very nice from Devin Mann. But the man of the match, no doubt, has been Zach Reeves. You need some insurance? Call this man. Leave the yard in a hurry. And it's 11 to 6. Get out! Texas Tech needs to record three outs. Do it before Louisville adds runs to the board, and they will be going to the Super Regionals. Davis Martin got the start, went five, allowed five hits, only allowed two runs, took one off the shin, and kept going. Tech Reams, a couple of home runs, five RBI, a three run shot in the first inning alone. Reed Devers really struggled, the freshman getting the start on the bump for Louisville. The Cardinals, two for ten with runners in scoring position. Tari Harpina get the chance to close this one out for the Red Raiders, making his second appearance in the Lubbock Regional. And Drew Campbell, the number six hitter, leads off, fouling it back. 6'2", 175-pound junior from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Went three and two-thirds, four hits, two runs allowed, and last night's win against Louisville. Klein collects and throws. One out. Now what's going on around the country, Lowell? And you look at it, there's a lot of upsets. Texas Tech two outs away from doing it, but here's the tickets punch so far. The Razorbacks, how about SEC? Three teams already. ACC 
not so fortunate as Louisville is on the ropes here with one out. And their ACC brethren have really struggled, especially the top teams from the ACC. Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina State, all national seeds that have already been eliminated. Yeah. Uh, you got Coastal, East Carolina, and Stanford's down 5 nothing to Cal State Fullerton. They were the number two overall national seed. So they're on the brink themselves. Mayhem in the third day of the NCAA regionals. High chopper, Young on the run. He's going to bare hand and throw. He did it. He did it. Well, you work on little things like that in practice. You get out and say, well, I'll give it a shot. Well, grab, go in the same motion and got him. Outstanding. Also tipping the cap to Warren on the other end for the scoop. One out away from the Supers. It will be the third appearance in Texas Tech history. Not yet. Says Zach Britton. If Texas Tech can close this one out, one out away, they will advance to take on the winner of the Athens Regional. If it's Georgia, it will be played in Athens. However, if Duke can win that Athens Regional, Supers are coming here to Lubbock. Strike one to Justin Levy. The Cardinals with the longest active streak in the game. Five straight trips to the Supers. Down to their final out. One pitch away. And here comes Rip Griffin. The home faithful on their feet. Unfinished business for the Red Raiders after losing right here at home is the number five national seed on this stage a year ago. Davis on the run to the Supers for the third time. Phenomenal story for Texas Tech. Well, I think First game of the year, they lose Steven Ginger, one of the best pitchers in America. Yet they find a way to get back to this point. Fabulous job by Tim Tadlock. Well, it, absolutely. And, and the other thing that you got to look at is they found their niche. Their niche is offense. Let's, let's just be honest. They, they play well, and they're swinging the bat. They, they press the envelope. Offensively, they'll seal bases. They get the ball out of the ballpark, especially in this park. Now, they may not be in this park for the next round, but to overcome losing what pitching they've lost and become a team, say, instead of beating you four to three, we'll beat you nine to eight. And that's what they just went out and pounded the baseball this weekend. And it started on the bump. Right? Davis Martin came out, did enough. They went five really good innings. And the offense with the early explosion as well. There was something about this team, a sense of urgency as soon as they were allowed to take their home field. They ran straight to their dugout, and it was business mode. And it didn't take long. Josh Young got him started. RBI single to make it 1-0 in 
Two batters later, Zach Reams began what will go down as his career day here at Texas Tech in what could be his final game here at Rip Griffin Park, depending on how the Athens Regional plays out. Texas Tech is in. Duke will have to beat Georgia twice to advance to the Super, and if that happens, that would mean the Super Regionals would be played here in Lubbock. If Georgia holds and gets that win, Texas Tech will be on the road to take on the Dogs.